Well, it's good to see you on this very rainy, rainy day. I came in from Batavia. My name is Diana Kastenbaum. Some of you may remember me. I see some of my old friends here. And uh, I ran for Congress in New York 27 in that, um, that wonderful year of 2016. And uh, unfortunately, I lost. Uh, but uh, I have been active um, with my own community and several women's groups and as an activist ever since that election. But I want to I talk today about my good friend, uh, Joan Elizabeth Siemens. Joan uh, and I met in 2018, and it was when she was actually considering running for the uh, congressional seat, and then she started her campaign for the state senate uh, in the 61st district. Um, she and I became instant friends, and I'm so happy and so proud to say that we're still friends to this day, and we speak on the phone, we text, we. We always see each other, and sometimes I'll stop by her, her uh, photography studio, and we'll sit and chit-chat. Um, she is, besides being an amazing friend to me, she is, um, I want, she is just a, since she ran her campaign in 2018, she has never stopped. You all know that. She's been out there constantly working, uh, never, ever stopped, and she closed the gap uh, to, she only lost by eight points, and she closed the gap uh, in more than a decade by um, the closest uh, single-digit percentile for anybody running for that particular seat. So that's amazing. <laughs> this territory is vast. When do you run for a, a, a Senate, state Senate seat or assembly seat or a federal seat? You have to cover a lot of territory. And one thing I, I've always admired about Joan is that it doesn't, it's, it's daunting to the average person, but she has been out there constantly. I would see her at every single event yeah. that I, I went to after my election, and she would be, she would come to all of the uh, Genesee County meetings that we had for our committees, and even if she wasn't going to speak, she just came. She just came to hear and talk to us. That's the kind of person she is. Yeah. She just shows up. And I, I think that's so necessary as a representative. And that's what I want in my representative. Um, she also has been joined by Gary, her wonderful husband. You all know Gary. I think he deserves to go round two, Gary. That's pretty good. And, uh, and also her amazing staff. And she also has a dad. Uh, William, and he's right here. William is a, a World War II veteran, and he's in his 90s, 92, can I say that? Yeah, 92. And he's uh, also appeared with her, as he is today. And so she has been, she's, she's just been amazing in terms of getting people around her, surrounding her with good, competent people, good, competent staff, and going out there and working. Um, every time I saw Joan, it, whether it was at the Genesee Orleans Regional Arts Council picnic in Batavia, at one of the committee meetings, wherever we bumped into each other, she would always be out there talking to somebody. And it wouldn't always be a Democrat. It would be a Republican or a conservative or somebody who uh, was in between. And she would be out there and she would actually sit down with them and take the time and ask them questions. Uh, how they felt about gun control. She's talked, she's gone into gun clubs, this woman, and she has talked to NRA members, and she has listened. Um, it's very important to listen. You always can't be espousing your, um, spouting off your, your beliefs, in which, uh, but you have to be able to listen, and that's the wonderful thing about Joan. That's why I think she turned, got such a huge turnout. Uh, to vote for her because I believe that there were Republicans and conservatives who once they met Joan, they came to respect her. And I think she turned many heads and many votes and that's why she came so close. Um, the other thing that's really important to me as a candidate is you have to do your homework. And Joan always does her homework. She, can, she knows every issue 
that is dealing with states and federal too. She can spout out the facts and she is so knowledgeable about it that she could really argue with just about anybody, present, present factual information to sway voters. That takes time. That takes intelligence. I want somebody who's intelligent. I want somebody who does their homework, and Joan is one of those people. And the other thing that I have come to, um, why I would like Joan to run again and why she is, is that uh, we need more women. We need more women in public office, particularly in this area. But not only do we need women, we need qualified women. And Joan is truly qualified. A lot of women can run, but it's important that they be qualified. And that's where Joan leads the path. So not only is she um, qualified, but she's a small business owner. I'm a small business owner, too. It's very difficult to run a small business. And it also, you know, there are very few CEOs in, in, in the country. And there's just a paucity of CEOs and presidents of companies. And yet Joan has successfully ran her business. And it takes a lot. You have to do payrolls. You have to know state laws. You have to be able to talk to workers. And she has done that. And I, I have great admiration for any, any woman who can run a business in this area. Because um, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, battles we have to fight. Uh, stereotypes that we have to fight. And so I'm very proud of her for that. She is also an activist, and that's probably where many of you know her best, because she's been in various Facebook groups. She has been out there, um, she's been out there constantly meeting with people in activist groups, and they, she has their support. I believe that Joan will be the next state senator for the 61st district. But we need your help. Every single person in this room needs to make a commitment today to support her. If you can't support her financially, you can support her in getting out and working for her campaign. I intend to do that. I know that all of you here will probably do it because you're here right now. And uh, we can actually get this seat now. I really believe we can. So I, am, I want you to know that um, I've endorsed her. I think the endorsement is coming out publicly uh, today or tomorrow. Uh, but I, uh, thank you. <laughs> but I, I want you to know that she is, she's very dear to me. She is a good friend, and I know the type of woman she is, and I know you all know the type of woman she is. We just have to let everybody else there in the district know also, and that it will only serve this district and all the people in it if we elect Joan Elizabeth Siemens. I said that I had seen a few familiar faces from my campaign. Um, one of the faces is uh, standing right here, uh, Mr. John Mudi, and he is the president of the CWA Local 1122, and I'd like to bring him to the stage now, and so good to see you again, John. <laughs> Thank you, Dana, and I'd like to echo some of the things that uh, Dana has said here. Uh, I, I've known Joan for a little over a year, and uh, I've never seen anyone work as hard as she does. Uh, she tires me out, to be honest with you. And um, we know where she stands on these common sense issues. She stands with, uh, you know, for improving the infrastructure in New York State. Uh, with that infrastructure improvement means bringing broadband access to every corner of the state, not just those cherry picked by these corporations. Uh, she believes in good health care for all in New York State. She supports safe staffing. <laughs> And to Diana's point, we need more women in, in leadership uh, roles in this state. And I think that if uh, we're successful here, New York State will be better off for it. So with no further ado, Joan Elizabeth Siemens.
thank you so much for being here. This, come on, this is so exciting, isn't it? It is so exciting. So, wow. You know, I, I, I want to, first of all, I'm so honored, I'm so touched uh, to have you here with me today and to have this opportunity. You know, I'm proud to be a Western New Yorker. I'm really proud. And as most of you probably know that uh, just a couple miles from here, I, with my husband Gary, have raised our two children, Nick and Alyssa. Uh, in these decades, decades, yes, decades, uh, I built a business that supported my family, still supports my family. I served as a trustee in the village of Williamsville. And together with my husband and children, because we understand the role we need to play in serving others, um, we uh, started a nonprofit. People don't know this. This is something you don't know about me, but now you do. We started a nonprofit that served the elderly and the poorest in our community. We ran that for six years. Um, it was just an incredible um, experience. I've given my time in various capacities. I was the president of the Williamsville Business Association. Um, and right now, for the town of Amherst, I serve on the Minority Women Business Enterprise Committee. And I'm also a member of NABO, National Association of Women Business Owners, and there I'm on the Public Policy Committee. But I do want to say something that I'm incredibly, incredibly proud of and something that brings me joy. It's this man. Dad? My dad, William E. Siemens, Jr., World War II Navy veteran, the love of my life. I'm his guardian. Hey, Daddy. A great man. It's just an honor to be taking care of him. Are there any veterans in the room? Anyway, let's give it up for my dad, William Siemens, World War II Navy veteran. What an honor. What an honor. Uh, Mike Hogan, where the heck are you? Mike. 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 Mike and crew who set this up for me. I love it. Um, Painter District Council, too. Um, you know, this room is, who thinks this is super cool? Like, do you not love this? This is what I'm about. And when I think about apprentice programs, training, and um, the opportunities we provide for people to be able to get good paying jobs, this is, this is so meaningful to me. So when he offered, I was like, I was all in. You know, and another thing, um, my dad's father, William E. Siemens, the first, right? Yeah. Um, he was a painter, Mike, he was a painter. Um, so anyway. Diana, John, thank you for your words. Honestly, I am so touched. Thank you so much. And friends, family, labor, our team, your support means the world to me. I'm truly honored. You lift me up and you give me inspiration. You know, growing up um, in a family of 10, family of 10, we did struggle. Um, in a working class family, my father worked long hours just to put food on the table. My mother had the daunting task of raising eight children. Through it all, they believed in the American dream. Dad, a lifelong Republican, mm -hmm, taught us the value of hard work and responsibility. And my mother, get ready, a lifelong Democrat, <laughs> taught us the importance of helping those around us who had even less than we had. But as you can imagine, think about election time. A Republican and Democrat in the household was a little interesting, what can I say? But I will say this, the lessons from my parents and my role as a businesswoman, a mother, a daughter, and a community advocate, these are the things that have shaped who I am. I'm keenly aware of the diverse needs of everyone across this diverse district. I've traveled thousands of miles, as Diana said, thousands of miles, and I've spoken to thousands of people from Amherst, Clarence, Newstead, all the towns in Genesee, the southwest uh, corner of the city of Rochester and the 19th Ward. I've listened, and I know the hardworking families of this district need a strong leader willing to fight for them every day to address their unique needs. Okay, 2018 elections. Something remarkable happened. Voters elected Democrats to the majority in Albany. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, the accomplishments of the Senate and the Assembly 
in one year have been nothing short of breathtaking. Yes? Yes. yes. Unbelievable. Early voting. Comprehensive climate change legislation. Where's my friend Ellen? Yes. <laughs> Long needed reforms for our LGBTQ community. Unbelievable. Much needed ethics reform. Yes, much needed. There is so much. The list is so long. And I really can't list everything. But I will tell you this. There's more work to be done. So I stand here before you today completely aware of the fight ahead along with my faith in God and the inner strength I have from my life experience, I stand before you today to announce my candidacy to be your next New York State Senator. Thank you. I'm running to be your senator because I love New York. It's not just the heart symbol. I love New York. I wake up every day thinking about the needs of people in Western New York, and I long to bring the voice of those who feel voiceless to Albany because it feels like it's been too long. I'm running to bring our democratic values to this region in Western New York. But you might say, well, what do you mean by those values? Joan, what do democratic values mean to you? First of all, I will say this. I, along with many, I'm truly tired of partisan politics and the business of political victories at the cost of victories for the people. I am tired of those politicians who work to divide us for their political gain. Yes. Being a Democrat is about putting people first. It has never been about me, ever. It's about listening to people their concerns, their fears, and working for solutions to make everyone in this state have a better life. So things are better for everyone. As a Democrat, I believe if we invest in people and provide opportunity for success, the economy grows, and guess what? Everyone wins. I'm also running to be your senator because the health care crisis will be on the top of my priority list. I thank you. Thank you. I have listened, and the stories are overwhelming. Overwhelming. Because I've knocked on thousands of doors, and I've listened from Clarence to Rochester, Amherst, everywhere in between. Stories from family after family who work. They work. They have insurance. But their health care costs are crippling their families. People are becoming sicker because they can't afford to go to the doctor. Senior citizens. I was at Wegmans picking up a script for my dad. And I asked the technician towards the end of the year, because at the end of the year, all the prescription costs go up. It's something about a donut. I don't know what it is. And I said, what happens? My dad can afford this script. They said, oh, the seniors just stopped getting their prescriptions. Unbelievable. So seniors are choosing between paying their heating bill and paying for prescription. I will tell you this. There is no easy solution. And we must get it right. But I will say this. As your senator, I will prioritize the health care crisis New York's are facing, and I will work to fix this broken system once and for all. <laughs> Diana, near to home, I'm running for the New York State Senate so the children in our rural communities will no longer have to leave their homes to access high-speed internet to do their homework. Think about that. I will work with upstate Republicans and Democrats to solve this decades-long problem. I'm running to be your senator because I know too well as a guardian of my father 
the issues facing those in nursing homes and medical facilities. Honestly, we should never pick up the newspaper again and read that a senior citizen was hurt or had died in a nursing home. I will, I will protect our elderly and vulnerable with my full support of safe staffing legislation. It has to happen. It has to happen. As your senator, I will support reforms in our criminal justice system. Listen, I believe that people living in poverty should not be punished more than those who have money in their pocket. <laughs> Drug addiction, as you know, continues to take loved ones from their families. My husband and I spent four years involved with families whose children struggled with addiction, and we know from witnessing firsthand their pain. We must continue in New York State to fight for solutions to crush this epidemic. It's critical. As your senator, I will work for the hardworking men and women in Western New York so they can put more money in their pockets every month. For a state where no woman or man should have to work multiple jobs just to put food on their table. Where small businesses can thrive and any worker can join a union. Where trade schools and jobs training are readily available and good paying jobs become the norm. I'm running to become your state senator to support children and their teachers because every child in New York State deserves a stellar education yeah. no matter where they live. Yeah. There is so much we can accomplish if we put people first. Think about it. Invest in people and let's watch what happens. But here's a little business. Democrats are in the majority. We know that. And we certainly know they have an advantage, right? But if you look at the state map, and here's a little lesson, you'll see that here's our state. Downstate, Democrats have a proliferation of senators representing them. Now let's look at Albany and West. Oops, not so much, all right? So we need to change that. And certainly we're thankful for Tim Kennedy, aren't we? Senator yeah. Kennedy. Yeah. I promise to be a senator for all people. I will fight to bring back our fair share of resources to each and every town in each of our three counties. I commit to working with every town and county leader to address their specific needs. It's a commitment. Whether it be funding for infrastructure, support of our farmers in our rural communities, or short distance school busing in the 19th Ward, it is time for everyone in Western New York to benefit from this Democratic majority. Yes. We need the money back home, guys. We need the money back home. It's time for Western New York to shine across this state, for people in our neighborhoods to wake up every day and hope with the hope and promise for a better future for them and their children. Yes. As we officially begin this campaign, let me tell you, I am not perfect. I am definitely not perfect. But I promise to bring a decency and moral character to everything I do and treat everyone in my path with respect. Yes. Yes. Of course, we know there will be challenges, but you know what? Is change worth fighting for? Yes. yes, it is. So I'll leave you with this, as President Obama so eloquently said, change will not come if we, for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. So my friends, let's do this together. In 2018, our camp campaign accomplished so much, as Diana said. We will win the Senate seat and create the change that we seek for a better Western New York. Now, who's with me?
Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.